just get um, it's, it's a slippery slope to start um, in this case to keep doing it um, paying for um, using city money to pay for developers private um, infrastructure Any comments from the uh, council members? I just question, are, are, Jason, are you saying the $30,189 is what you would suggest? That's three years? Well, that was uh, when we run, and the, simply all we can use is today's, today's uh, tax rates. I mean, so this is simply an estimate. So when, it, when you figure you figure in the uh, valuation of what's expected on the property once it's done. Um, that is, and using today's tax rates, that is the estimate of what what the benefit is. Um, so, so my recommendation is to offer the three additional years rather than the money up front. But okay. Any other questions? I, um, I just pay Jason because uh, I am on the phone. It gets a little breaky up here. So if something gets said and I need it repeated, I apologize. But um, your recommendation, Jason, is staying consistent with um, the other agreements we've got with the other apartment people, correct? Well, um, no, it's not really consistent, Clark, because um, we can go back. I can. I wrote down some examples. I mean, so we've given money. The city's given money to Gallus slash Vision Builders for um, what essentially ended up being a private driveway, concrete for a private driveway, and that was in lieu of putting on-street parking in. So we figured the amount that the con could the concrete, how much it would cost to build that on-street parking, and gave gave that developer the money up front, which ended up going towards private driveway. We've given money to um, uh, Brown for concrete uh, based on the same scenario. Um, in lieu of on-street parking, we took that money and gave it to him so he could build uh, parking on his private property. We've given uh, rebate the three additional years to Adam Brown in the past. And our most recent one is we gave um, Gallus, Brad Gallus money uh, to put in uh, private utilities. So it, it's not really consistent with anything, Clark, because we've kind of been all over the board. Did that answer your question, Clark? Okay. Yeah, it answers my question, but actually confuses me a little bit more. Uh, but my point is, I want to be fair to Mr. Morrow, Mr. Brown, um, Mr. Gallus, and if I leave somebody out, I apologize. I, I want to treat all these guys fair, okay? So how does that fit into my question, Jason? Does your recommendation fit that? Dollars-wise, is that what I'm hearing? Is, is your recommendation saying we're trying to keep things even across the board? Well, what I'm well, I guess what I'm getting at, Clark, is I didn't, I I didn't agree with the last action of the council uh, to give money up front for private utilities. I didn't agree with that either, but it happened. Uh, so I'm just saying my recommendation is. I wouldn't continue. I, I wouldn't want the city to continue doing that because the requests are never going to end. Um, I feel more comfortable with adding the three years on the end in the form of a tax rebate rather than giving money up front. But that does answer my question, and I agree wholeheartedly with you. And I do remember the vote. Um, where, where it was not your recommendation, I do most certainly remember that, um, and I guarantee it was not a five to zero vote. Um, so I agree with what you're saying here. Any other comments from the um, from the council members? 
Um, I maybe the only comment that I would make, Dick, is uh, is is there an urgency to us approving or denying this today, and maybe table this for two weeks, and so that we can all kind of get our heads around a little bit more information as to exactly. Because I think I think the other council people would agree we want to be fair to everybody. We want to treat everybody fairly. But I also think we agree with Jason that we can't just be approved because if you approve one, then we already know how that works. Everybody wants. So I think I myself would feel more comfortable with maybe postponing this decision for two weeks or and not putting it off, not throwing it in the trash. But I want some more information on where we're at before I really want to step, go out on a limb here. That's my take. So I, uh, if there's no real immediate urgency, I would like to just table this until we have more information on uh, as to there. That's, that's my take. Comments from other council members? We've been pretty consistent in adding this three years rebate. Jason might, might agree with that. We, to me, that's the one consistent thing that we can do that's, that's fair. Because we're talking about the three last years, seven, eight, nine. Is that right, Jason? Eight, nine, ten. Eight, eight nine, nine, ten. ten. Okay, I'm okay with that. I would if, make if a motion you're... to uh, approve the three-year refund, eight, nine, ten. Uh, whatever that dollar amount figures out to in taxes, uh, that would be my motion. There is a motion on the table to approve a development agreement with Mr. Morrow and Properties LLC for three years of city tax state, city tax rebate. Excuse me. Is there a second? Mike Donald seconded. There's a second. Did we have a roll call on that, Bill? Wick? Yes. Goodchild? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Motion carried on the development to approve of the agreement with Mr. Morrow Land Properties LLC for three years on city tax rebate. Thank you very kindly. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank nice you. meeting you too. Nice meeting you too. Uh, Hugh, are you going to be, um, so it'll be one of these, develop it'll be the development agreement in here. Okay. So at some point you'll need to sign that. Okay. Okay. Are you around for a week or two? Yeah. Okay. We'll be here. Thank you very kindly again. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll listen to it looks like a nice project out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I do want to share with you that we really appreciate you as a developer stepping up and helping our town in regard to our housing project. Yeah. We, we've, watched, we've watched this housing project mm -hmm. and it is really booming, right? Yeah. It has been for the last three or four or five years. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you're one of them. And I just want you to know that on behalf of the city of Lamar's, we appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. Well, if it wasn't for the incentives that you provided in the state, um, you know, we, I probably wouldn't have invested. Yeah. You know, I came over visiting from family from China, and I was going to just remodel a two-bedroom downtown the building. And that's where it started. Wasn't and it? that's where it started. Joe Gallus <laughs> said, hey, go talk to the city, and then now yeah. we dumped in $3 million into the city. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we, re I just, we just want you to know we really appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. And I right. hope it's working for you. It is working well. Yeah. Good. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Okay, uh, moving on to... Um, Number one in the action items, and that's the uh, offer to purchase property. The city has received a verbal offer for purchase of the following property. The aerial map of the area is attached, which I think you should be in your packet. The east 184.43 feet of the south 609.85 feet of lot three and the west 172 feet of the south 1609.585 feet, both the Lamar's and Industrial Park and the Lamar's and the Industrial South Edition 
the city of Lamar's Eye. I just want to let everybody know the description of that. <laughs> gotcha. Hope there ain't any questions on that. Uh, the property is approximately five acres. And the recommendation for the uh, administration uh, recommends that the council establish a public hearing to consider any or all offers of the property. Financially, the city sold the property to Allen and Sharon Pratt for $30,000 an acre in 2013. The city bought back the property from Allen and Sharon Pratt for $30,000 an acre in 2019. So what we're really asking is, I believe, for this is a is a here a public hearing on this on this property that I just shared with you. Do I entertain a motion? Motion to adopt resolution 2044 established in January 5th, 2021 at 12 p.m. as a public hearing on any and all written offers received by December 29, 2020 at 12 p.m. For property located on lot three and lot five on the Lamar's Industrial Park South Edition. Is there a second? Yes, I have a second. There's Either been, one. There's been a motion made and second to adopt the resolution number 20-44, establishing January 5th, 2021 at 12 p.m as a public hearing on or on any or all written offers received by December 29th, 2020 at 12 p.m. for the property located on lot three and lot five in the Lamar's Industrial Park, South Edition. Do we have a roll call on that, Bev? Good, child. Yes. Yeah. Donlin. Yes. Nelson. Yes. Yes. Motion carried. Moving on to uh, D2 uh, of the um, action items. It's in regard to the airport runway 1836 reconstruction project. Attached is a work order number 10 for Bolton and Maine to provide design, bidding, construction, and grant administration services for the reconstruction of airport uh, runway 18 slash 36. The city administrator recommends the council approval. Uh, project completion is anticipated to be mid 2022. The finance portion of this is the project is a 90% FAA and 10% city funding split. The Bolton and Mink Professional Services contract is eligible for the cost of the split. The estimated total cost of the project is $4,085,100. Um, so what we're really asking for is the approval of the Bolton and Mink, Bolton and Mink Administration Engineering Services. Right, Jason? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, a uh, large number for a uh, high-priced project. Well, can I ask a question here, Jason? Yeah. Um, Bolton and Mink, the engineering, um, runs roughly 10% of the total project. Is that correct? I thought it was about no. 15. I'm sorry? I think it appeared. I think it appears to come out to about fifteen. Probably pretty close to fifteen percent, Clark. Okay, fifteen percent. I have a question here. I'm not an engineer, but I know we're not constructing a new airport. We are not. We are not going to require a ton of regrading. We are not going to reposition anything. I'm scratching my head saying, what the heck is an engineer doing for 15% to oversee somebody ripping up a bunch of concrete and pouring down a bunch of concrete? I know it's not that simple, but it seems very high to me that, that well, this isn't a new project. This is ripping up a hunk of concrete and pouring down new concrete. What? What's being engineered? Clark, if 
you read through that, uh, you and I have both commented on streets that have deteriorated in town and the sub work that, that we felt was not adequately done. If you read through that contract, you find out there's several areas where they speak to the very issue. Because the one thing we don't want to do is to have that runway break up. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons for the cost and also things that the federal government requires to have done to do a project like this. Yeah, and I, I imagine that the regulations on what's required, Kenny, I think that holds a lot of weight. Um, I, I do. I just, man, it's a I love that, I think. Yeah, so initially, initially, I mean, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of, I mean, so we're paying for a lot of time yeah. investment. Um, and they still have to come up with plans. Some of, some of what is required, like Ken said, is required by FAA. Um, what was also what was also done as part of this, just so everybody knows, um, I believe it is a requirement uh, from the FAA that uh, we go to an outside source, um, somebody other than Bolton and Maine, and get a like comparison or a quote. Okay, so that was done prior to this. And what that does is it, it double checks um, that Bolton and Mink is just not throwing a big number at it and saying, hey, pay us this. Um, it's kind of a check and balances. So that was done. And it really okay, who was the other? And that's fine, Jason. I accept that as, a, as I, I believe you. And I realize when you take federal dollars, you got to play by their rule. I get that. But, um, I mean, I'm going to go along with this, okay? But I just want to voice that it, it seems like an exorbitant amount to me. So, anyway, I'm going to go along with it. So. Yeah, the, only, sa the yeah. only saving grace with that huge number is that it is a 90-10 split. That's it is and engineering and engineering is part of that split, correct? Yes, it, so was that independent uh, independent quote is part of that too. So Okay. That's the two good things about it, Clark. First of all, and, and I'm not trying to push it on, but first of all, <coughs> excuse me, the federal government is paying for ninety percent of it. And the yeah. sec and the second part it's allowing the engineering fees in on that 90%. Yep. Uh, Mike? I would add a comment too yeah. if I could. Is this Mike? Yeah, Mike. Go uh, ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. I think uh, I took some comfort in uh, realizing that uh, of the 600,000 estimated of the fee, only 40% of that uh, is actual construction engineering and that by itself is hourly not to exceed as it's needed kind of thing. Most of the uh, the fee the Boulder Mink will be earning is for designing the project so that the contractor does it properly and complies with the FAA. So it isn't like the whole 600000 is a bunch of engineering because that would be a, a concern. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, I'd uh, entertain a motion. Motion to approve the Bolton and Make Incorporate Professional Services contract cost of six hundred and two thousand excuse me, six hundred two thousand six hundred dollars for the airport runway eighteen dash thirty six reconstruction project. Is there a second? Donald second. Motion made and second to approve the Bolton & Mink Incorporated Professional Services contract at a cost of $602,600 for the airport runway 18 slash 36 reconstruction project. Jeff, can we have a roll call on that? Wick? Yes. Yes. Nelson? Yes. Donovan? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, fellas.
Okay, moving on to D3 under the uh, action items. And that involves the Airport Improvement Program, AIP. Each year, the city must submit an update list of future airport improvements to the FAA. Attached is the five-year list consisting of the fiscal year 22, fiscal 26, as prepared by Bolton and May. The list consists the list consisted with the Lamar's Municipal Airport Master Plan. The Airport Advisory Committee initially reviewed the list of the improvements October 21st, 2020 of this year to prioritize projects and finalize the list on November 18th, 2020. The AIP must be submitted by December 21st, 2020. The recommendation is that the Airport Advisory Committee is recommending council approval for the Airport Improvement Program. Motion to approve the Airport Advisory Committee's recommendation. Approvals to the airport, excuse me, approval of the airport program. Is there a second? I'll second, Wick. Motion made and second to approve the airport advisory committee's recommendation to approve the airport improvement program. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The next one on the list is number four under the action items, and it has to do with surplus property. With the completion of the new skate park of Old Tool Park in 2019. Yeah, we'll get there in a minute. Excuse me, just a minute. I'm going to stop. Uh, Steve, uh, uh, sit tight. Do you need me to call?